first of all, I thought this was fantastic, great idea. Um, and I guess I was just really curious about um, the adjustability um, factor and how you thought of that. Was that based on feedback um, you know, from people using these devices today? Why do so many of the competitors not have that capability? Um, I guess I was just curious to learn a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, so we thought of this adjustable adjustability factor because uh, we want to target our product towards children. And of course, they grow and we don't want parents to have to keep buying these products, you know, as they uh, grow. And a lot of other competitors make the prosthetics like customized to that person. So that's what really drives up a lot of the cost um, in the prosthetics a lot of the time. And um, yeah, we we want to avoid that to not only reduce the cost, but also reduce how much, how often the kids have to go through all these changes. Um, and additionally, the target audience for a lot of our competitors is actually adults, um, just because they also recognize they don't have this adjustability feature. So they wouldn't want to try to advertise to right. their parents that, oh, you might have to buy another device in two years. So um, that's something that we want to address and target children. Great. Thank you. Um, I think this is great. By the way, I think you guys did a great job presenting this, uh, and and sharing the stage. Uh, that's often missed by some teams. So, so very nice job there. Um, I think the adjustability is great. And to, do I understand right that this is kind of a it's a generic, so kind of one size fits all because you can adjust it to to each child. Great. And um, and does it require any special skills to to put on and set up? Um, so for the design, we've tried to keep it um, sort of simple right here. We have a Velcro belt, which you can see. Um, and these ones are also kind of slip on to the fingers. Um, of course, we would try to, uh, once we have a prototype, we want to try to create a video. Um, so when we ship these products out, we want um, our customers to see something where it's easy to uh, work with and also use. Okay. And what is your, uh, just to follow up, what's, what's your... Um plan for like how would you distribute i'm assuming that the majority of the 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 cases here are probably not in the us right so how do you get how are you, how would you get it to people and is this a nonprofit or is this a uh what's your what's your idea of how you go to market with it sure um tina would you like to speak on this sure so um currently we're thinking about doing clinical stages and we're targeting those on Facebook specifically, because I know that a lot of parents are on social media nowadays, and there are a bunch of groups that actually like cater to congenital deformities. So for the clinical stage to begin with, we're planning to ship it out to those parents so they can test out the prototypes with their kids. And then from there on, we would obviously profit by making money off of it. We're not a nonprofit program, although we thought we wanted to be, but because of the prices of the materials to print it out, obviously we have to find some way to get some money. So we would have to get, do so by doing that. <clears throat> and we're planning to use that money to begin shipping out otherwise. And in the future, we plan to expand, but for now we're only doing the United States. Okay, thanks. I had one quick question. So it, it looks like from a, a, a general perspective, the, uh, the con, I can't remember the name of the other company, but it looks like it was more metal materials, right? Which, which was certainly in the manufacturing and the raw materials can drive up costs. But if you show that other image um, uh, of the, the company that had the metal one, that was, I think it was $9,000, you know, 9,000 to, to $19,000. I'm interested in why that's so expensive and how you can make something comparable at $300. Not that I don't think that it's possible, but, uh, but that's, that's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty amazing value proposition. And I might say, why sell it for 300 when you could sell it for a thousand <laughs> because you're so much cheaper and, and, and very similar. So that the, um, the company that you're talking about is Naked Prosthetics. They use a lot of more durable material and for our device, we're planning on using also durable material, but that's a lot more cheaper. So it's 
uh, a lot cheaper to manufacture. The price is also ranked up that high because as we said, every prosthetic that they make is customizable to each person. So obviously the machinery needed and like all the measurements and stuff that jacks up the price a lot more. While as ours is more of a universal device that can be adjustable and adapt to um, children's growth. That's like an excellent question as well. We had, um, we were working with our mentor who's also a mechanical engineering background um, with some biz business exposure. And he was also mentioning how, you know, if you can sell it for 300 and you sell it for 1000, you're still selling at one tenth the price of what's available in the market. Um, but we were also thinking about how we really, really want to emphasize this being affordable to um, every individual who can't um, come across such a device. Right. And you could always, you know, you could use the, the Tom's model where, you know, you use yes. the American market that could afford that and then uh, uh, be able to finance uh, uh, developing countries. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of fun, uh, you know, there's lots of fun business. Uh, I, when you can undercut the price by 30, uh, by 30 times, or <laughs> then um, uh, you, you can, uh, you got a lot of room to, to play with it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Hunter, I think uh, Chris had a, a question, but he was on mute. We couldn't oh. hear Chris. Oh, Chris. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I, and, and Hunter, you kind of asked the same question, but, um, but uh, you know, I'll kind of expand on that a little bit is what, what does insurance cover on, the, on something like this? So you're, you're talking about costs, but, you know, if you're looking at targeting the United States and there's, um, you know, maybe 200,000 uh, potential customers, it, it, but in the United States with the whole mandate for everybody gets insured, if it's, if it's covered by insurance, um, it, is your, I mean, 300 versus 9,000, obviously, um, you know, your insurer would probably want you to purchase yours anyway, but uh, you know, are these insured? I mean, I can't, are they covered by insurance? I will take that question. Um, so basically, no, they are not covered by insurance. And the reason being is because they are just for physical appearance. So insurance doesn't think of them as like a health necessity. Okay, interesting. Um, I, I just, uh, one, one uh, uh, comment or some, or some coaching. I think you tallied up that yours, yours would be about $300. Uh, that seems like it's kind of the cost of goods at $300. But I, I think um, when you get other people on your team, maybe from the business school, uh, but uh, be prepared for other costs to creep in. So admin and salaries and fulfillment and things like that, okay? So you may end up at $1,000 by the time you by the time you factor it all in, but just don't be surprised. Yeah, and that's, that's part of the process, right? Uh, yeah. You to start with an idea and then you keep yeah. refining it and learning and everything. Well, um, any further questions from the judges or Iman? All right. Well, guys, fantastic job. Uh, uh, you know, I can't emphasize enough. That was smooth, delivered perfectly. That was, uh, that was a great job. So uh, appreciate your efforts. And um, uh, thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Bye, guys. Bye.